We're headed to Macedonia. This is going to be my first international hunting trip, actually my first time um, over to Europe. Uh, going with my dad and my sister, um, chasing mouflon sheep. So a little over a year ago, I was sitting at work at my desk and got a call from my mom and dad. They were at a hunting show that weekend and had bid on this hunt to come over um, to Macedonia. And I answered the phone, my dad said, how about we go to Macedonia next year to hunt some mouflon sheep? And got extremely excited just because we hadn't um, been on a family hunting trip um, together in a long time. So it was, it was a pretty cool phone call to get just in the middle of the day at work. We just made it to Greece and we have about a two hour drive. Uh, to the lodge, then we'll probably have dinner, and then uh, wake up in the morning and go hunting. Can't wait. Longest flight I've ever been on. We've been traveling for like what, 18 well, hours yeah. now? And still have a two hour drive, so I'm just ready for some food and a shower. <laughs> Most of the hunting that I've done um, has been white-tailed deer hunting and um, while I absolutely love that and will continue to do that probably for the rest of my life, um, I've definitely been craving a much you know, more complicated and harder, more tough um, kind of hunt. I've done a couple spot and stock hunts and absolutely love them. Um, I definitely can just tell that I, I'm, I'm craving more, more of a, a challenge, more of an adventure. and so. Uh, this was an awesome way to kind of get my feet wet and, um, and start doing some of those more tough hunts. With two of us hunting, especially sisters, comes the question of, well, who's going to shoot first? We mostly just took it, um, you know, each stock at a time, who was feeling the most comfortable and the most ready. Um, sometimes one of us might have been more tired than the other after the hike, and so if there was one that uh, one of us in particular liked more, we, you know, would let the other one uh, get set up on it to see if they could get a shot. So um, we very much, we worked as sisters during this and <laughs> just kind of took turns. First I look at this one, what we look, one hour, but not, he's not there. Behind and coming where is female and coming down. This okay. one is the biggest what was here. Okay. It's really good and like this. Okay. Now if they move around, I won't know. Mm -hmm. If they move around, I don't know where he is, but right now I do. Okay. Yeah, so there's one little one in the front and then two here. Yes. He's the one that's the the further out. Okay. He's dark. He's got a darker face. Huh? He's darker. Yeah. Well, so, well, so if we can get set up down there, if we can, can't see him, might have to get over here. This segment of Trophy Hunters TV is brought to you by Swagger Bipods, the bipod with moves. Right there. Yep, there, nope. Right there. Ready? Uh-oh. My sister was set up on that ram for, for quite a long time. We were trying to get a better look at it. Um, and I know, I know waiting is hard. You can get nervous, you can get panicky, especially when you've been on one for so long. And unfortunately she did miss um, after taking her shot. And 
And that was definitely kind of hard to watch. I know she was very disappointed in herself. She's actually never, never missed an animal before. It's a tough shot. I mean, don't worry about his long ways. But, uh, I don't think he could have made the shot. I wouldn't let you shoot that far. Mm-hmm. How far was it? 200 yards. Yeah, you could do that. Hmm? You can do that. Yeah, I know. I mean, I didn't. No, I know, but it was tough. But yeah. Kind of the brush, you know. I mean, you looked pretty clear though when you looked at it. Mm-hmm. It definitely is hard to watch um, someone you love, you know, get upset a little and, and be disappointed in themselves. You speak Serbian? <laughs> I think the bullet hit um, at the base of that tree, and then uh, bounced off, and brushed off that other side of the tree. When I think about my dad, the first word that comes to mind is true hunter. He has been hunting since I can remember. And, you know, being small, I remember him going off to Australia and Africa. And I actually didn't start hunting until I was about 17. My sister, on the other hand, started when she was about eight. She took her first turkey. And um, I would always go with them. And I had no problem with hunting. I just personally didn't want um, to take an animal at that time. And finally, when I was 17, decided that I was ready. And ever since, I've been hooked. Um, and I think that's fine. Uh, you know, it took me a while to kind of get my feet wet and learn the ropes of everything. But my dad's really taught us, you know, everything we've needed to know. We learn something new with him each time we go hunting. And it's just great to be able to share that with your family. We've hunted extremely hard this trip, um, but we did save some time to be able to sightsee while we're here. We took a three and a half hour drive um, up to visit a monastery and a beautiful lake. Um, I think they said it was one of the deepest and oldest lakes here in Europe. Um, weather wasn't great. <laughs> it was a little windy and cold and rainy, but we made the most out of it. Really got to, you know, kind of see some of the culture here and just the way of life here. <laughs> the people who rebuild the church and finish it is 1711. Uh, uh, 1711. Wood and gold. This is all the gold. gold. Yeah. The buildings and the architecture is so much different than it is in the States. And um, really something cool to experience since this is my first time kind of, um, you know, out of the country as far as Europe goes. This segment is provided by Big and J. The aroma is super strong, the range is super long.
Wait, the one, so black one, the one that yes. I carry? Yes, yes, yes. Those are the two I've been looking yes. at. Our guide, Sasha, was amazing. Um, he's originally from Serbia, and um, even though he can't speak English, there was definitely a little bit of a, um, you know, language divide just because dialects aren't the same. So we had, we had a bunch of good laughs sometimes um, with not understanding what each other was saying. Um, so that was interesting because usually in the past, my dad has always guided me, and while he was here, um, you know, Sasha took lead in, in helping us find the Rams. We've been sitting here for almost an hour looking at a, a herd of um, mouflon here over this um, ridge. And we had our eye on two of them. One of them looked a lot more mature and older, but just not the look that we were wanting. So we we're looking at the one um, beside it and couldn't get him to turn and look towards us. We could only see him from the side and just couldn't decide if um, we wanted to take him or not. And the moment he stood up, he didn't give us a second to even look at him. He took off. So. Gonna go uh, either follow them, I don't know if we've decided yet, but um, go try to find another one. The train out here reminds me very much of the mountains in Colorado. I've been visiting there a lot and, you know, hiking and climbing and skiing and um, it very much resembles the same thing out here. Coming into this, I really had no idea what to expect as far as how the hunt would go and was very surprised at how many animals we saw and just huge herds of mouflon, um, a lot of females, you know, quite a few rams as well. Um, there were fallow deer out here, we saw some wild boar, there were just tons of wildlife, um, which I, I don't think I exactly expected to see. The outfitter out here has really done a, a great job of, you know, keeping the herds big and um, there were just, there's a ton of game out here. It, it blew my mind. Trying to stalk these rams as a group became very difficult. Um, just a large group trying to sneak up, you know, on, on a rock ledge or um, behind a tree got pretty tricky. The MUFON usually would see us and run off. So um, we decided to go about it with a different strategy. And once we, you know, spotted a herd and saw some good rams, we would decide who was going to, um, to shoot and kind of split up so that uh, the group that was going to shoot um, had a better chance of sneaking up on the rams. Yeah, let's go. This segment of Trophy Hunters TV is brought to you by Buck Knives, the official knife of the Texas Trophy Hunters Association.
Sasha had spotted another group of rams um, feeding and uh, resting down kind of in a little valley. And so we uh, snuck up uh, to the highest vantage point that we could so we could take a good look. And there were tons of animals. He's up with the females. At this point when all of the other um, herd was heading up the mountain, um, started to get a little nervous because he was still laying down behind the tree and it was kind of two options. If he, if he went below, um, I was going to lose sight of him. And if he followed the other line of rams, um, I wasn't going to get a good shot on him. So definitely the nerves kicked in right then. Second one. Are we gonna wait? Are they ready? Yes. Wait, I'm gonna wait. Yeah. Great shot, Ash. <laughs> Bravo. We wait for me. <laughs> My heart was pounding. shaking. <sighs> Walking up on my ram when we recovered him was such a great um, kind of moment. Uh, we hadn't been close to any of these animals uh, the entire trip and to finally be able to, you know, pick him up by his horns and take a good look at him was really a special moment. Um, you know, celebrated with my dad and my sister and Sasha, and it's something that I will never forget. Oh my gosh. Like this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Like that. 